Good morning. Today we celebrate the feast of St. Francis of Assisi, a person who loved everyone and everything, not mere human beings, all the animals, the nature itself. He has seen God in everything, in all that God has created. So today let's ask him to intercede that we might learn to love every person and everything that God has given to us. And now we shall begin. We shall read the entrance antiphon. Francis, the man of God, left his home behind, abandoned his inheritance, and became poor and penniless, but the Lord raised him up. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Let us ask God to forgive our sins and to make us worthy to celebrate this Eucharist. I confess in my thoughts, in my words, and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, by whose gift St. Francis was confirmed to Christ in poverty and humility, grant that by walking in Francis' footsteps, we may follow your Son, and through joyful charity, come to be united with you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the beginning of the book of the prophet Jonah. This is the word of the Lord that came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Set out for the great city of Nineveh and preach against it. Their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah made ready to flee to Tarshish, away from the Lord. He went down to Joppa, found a ship going to Tarshish, paid the fare, and went aboard to journey with them to Tarshish, away from the Lord. The Lord, however, hurled a violent wind upon the sea, and in the furious tempest that arose, the ship was on the point of breaking up. Then the mariners became frightened, and each one cried to his God. To lighten the ship for themselves, they threw its cargo into the sea. Meanwhile, Jonah had, got down, had gone down into the hold of the ship, and lay there fast asleep. The captain came to him and said, What are you doing asleep? Rise up, call upon your God. Perhaps God will be mindful of us so that we may not perish. Then they said to one another, Come, let us cast lots to find out on whose account we have met with this misfortune. So they cast lots and thus singled out Jonah. Tell us, they said, What is your business? Where do you come from? What is your country? and to what people do you belong? Jonah answered them, I am a Hebrew. I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Now the men were seized with great fear and said to him, how could you do such a thing? They knew that he was fleeing from the Lord because he had told them. They asked, what shall we do with you that the sea may quiet down for us? For the sea was growing more and more turbulent. Jonah said to them, Pick me up and throw me into the sea, that it may quiet down for you, since I know it is because of me that this violent storm has come upon you. Still the men rode hard to regain the land, but they could not, 
while the sea grew ever more turbulent. Then they cried to the Lord, We beseech you, O Lord, let us not perish for taking this man's life. Do not charge us with shedding innocent blood, for you, Lord, have done as you saw fit. Then they took Jonah and threw him into the sea, and the seas raging abated. Struck with great fear of the Lord, the men offered sacrifice and made vows to him. But the Lord sent a large fish that swallowed Jonah, and Jonah remained in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. From the belly of the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God. Then the Lord commanded the fish to spew Jonah upon the shore. The word of the Lord. The sponsorial psalm. You will rescue my life from the pit, O Lord. You will rescue my life from the pit, O Lord. Out of my distress, I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From the midst of the netherworld, I cried for help, and you heard my voice. You will rescue my life from the pit, O Lord. For you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the sea, and the flood enveloped me. All your breakers and your billows passed over me. You will rescue me from life from the pit, O Lord. Then I said, I am banished from your sight, yet would I again look upon your holy temple. You will rescue my life from the pit, O Lord. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. My prayer reached you in your holy temple. You will rescue my life from the pit, O Lord. Please stand. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. I give you a new commandment, love one another as I have loved you. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. There was a scholar of the law who stood up to test Jesus and said, Teacher, what, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He said in reply, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. He replied to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, he said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man fell victim to robbers as he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. They stripped and bit him and went off leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down that road. But when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. Likewise, a Levite came to their place, and when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. But a Samaritan traveler who came to him was moved with compassion at the sight. He approached the victim, poured oil and wine over his wounds and bandaged them. Then he lifted him up on his own animal, took him to the inn and cared for him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper with the instruction, take care of him. If you spend any more than what I have given you, I will repay you on my way back. Which of these, in your opinion, was neighbor to the robber's victim? He answered, the one who treated him with mercy. Jesus said to him, go, and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord 
the parable we heard today, the Good Samaritan, widely read, liked, and practiced, not just in Christianity, but even people who belong to other religion were fascinated by today's parable. And that's why a person who is merciful, a person who is helpful, often called a good Samaritan. It has become a name in use even in people who do not believe. And we have a house in our church, Samaritan house, the house that reaches out to hundreds of people every month. Who is Samaritan or who is my neighbor? Today in the gospel reading we heard a teacher of the law came and asked Jesus, what must I do? This person was a good person. To those standards, he was a very good person because he knows the law and he followed the law. He knows what laws to be followed. Probably he is very regular to the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He loved himself, he loved his family, he loved people around him. But Jesus is asking him to extend the world around him to a larger world. Not your own, not a person next to your house. Extend your world in a bigger way. Whoever is in need, he need not be the person who is living next to your home or your friend or a person with whom you're employed or you're working. Your world should be bigger. The bigger the world be your world becomes, the greater you get closer to God. That's what today's saint, Francis of Assisi, who had all the opportunity to live very comfortably. He was born in a very wealthy family. He had all the things that he needed. He would have been very comfortable and happy. But he wanted to love not just himself, his family, but the whole world. A saint who loved nature. A saint who loved even animals. When there was a clash between him and his dad, his dad said, you cannot do this. I want you to be successful in the worldly way. And we all know that he left everything all his wealth, including his robes, his clothes. He left everything and found God in every person and in every living being, including the nature. So today, dear brothers and sisters, let's ask Jesus to help us that our world should be increasing, getting bigger and bigger every day. What we have remains with us. What we give comes with us even to the next world. Let's reach out to others like Francis of Assisi, today's saint and a good Samaritan, that we should be able to see God in every person that we meet, even our strangers. We shall all stand and pray for our needs. that all the leaders of the church may be blessed with fortitude in the proclamation of the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord that all nations may be under the protection of the Lord and be at peace with one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord that all women facing difficult and unplanned pregnancies may receive compassionate care and support they need. We pray to the Lord that this community of faith may continue to be cleansed and perfected through the love of God manifest in this Eucharist. We pray to the Lord that all who have died may inherit eternal life. We pray to the Lord. And for what else shall we pray now?
Lord, hear our prayer. We shall pray for Charlotte Mario Matthews, for whose intention this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray. Merciful Father, you have shown us your tender care. Hear and answer the prayers of your children. Through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord our God. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we bring you these offerings, O Lord, we pray that we may be rightly disposed for the celebration of the mystery of the cross, which St. Francis so ardently embraced. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It's truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new and offer us sure signs of your love and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled. Their great example lends us courage. The fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we do give you thanks. As an exaltation, we acclaim. Holy, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. And Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Paul, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Francis of Assisi, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let's pray for the coming of God's kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father, may will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of Jesus Christ be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sin. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be saved.
comedian Andy Flynn. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, through these holy gifts which we have received, that imitating the charity and the apostolic zeal of St. Francis, we may experience the effects of your love and spread them everywhere for the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. We shall go in peace. Pray to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of Heavenly Host, by the Satan, all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls.